Hello, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV here, just coming to you live with something very, very powerful. First, I'd like to just show you a little glimpse of uh, the beautiful place where I am. And that's just a couple of the trees there. And there's many more going down the line, but I see them from a different angle. But let's... Uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to say uh, uh, some other things, and, and the Lord just had me to uh, <clears throat> welcome to everybody that's coming on. God bless you. I want to get right into it. Coming to you live from the Range Rover office. Just finished a uh, beautiful partner's lunch. Oh, it was, it was heaven on earth. And uh, here in a great, great series of meetings, and I'm just so thrilled. I want to I wanna talk to you for just a few moments about 20 attributes of our King Jesus. 20 great things about him and things you need to know. And I'm just going to mention the title premises of it and not explain the rest for sake of time and brevity. But uh, <clears throat> Jesus is so vast and when he comes into your life, it's the greatest thing that could ever happen. I want to pray also that somebody may be led to come on here. The Lord like led them to get on here and they don't know how. But I can tell you about this Jesus who's so wonderful and you can receive him uh, in your heart and receive him in your life and receive his salvation by just saying, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. And I'm going to do it in a real quick, simple way. Of course, we can do a long, you know, thing about... Uh, you know, salvation and the benefits and how it works and all that. But for sake of time and for sake of just a quick, you know, fix on the air. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And then you may be in some crisis in your life and you need help. Call out to him. He's listening. And if you've never committed yourself enough to him, just say, Lord, I receive you as my savior. Holy Spirit, fill me. Devil, get out. Devil, you're not my Lord. Satan, you're not my master anymore all your rubbish and your circumstances and pomp and hype and sin and debauchery and perversion and what else all the things of the world you know you don't need anywhere but to death even some people get money even people that have stolen money that steal money and I've had that happen terrible terrible situations and uh, you know <clears throat> they got they got what they got, but that's all they get, and then they get a curse. I mean, a real curse that'll eat them alive until they're dead. And then if they didn't get saved in the process, which a lot of them don't, because repentance has to do with restitution and recreation to put things, put the clock back to where you found it. And most criminal crooks, they never do it. They never do it. And... Um, God could be merciful, <clears throat> but if you really want to repent, and I've, I've taught on this before, you know, you got to bring restitution. And most people don't want to do that. So they just keep that sin to themselves and that charge of hell to themselves. And they're not going to get out of it because uh, they don't want to make it right. You know, I, I confronted one man, as I've said before, who stole some valuable things. And he... Uh, said, oh, yes, I understand, you know, got to make it right. Never sent a penny, even a dollar, a shekel or a shilling. He didn't repent. He still carry on in his foolishness, and he has a curse on him because of that. So you want to break the curse? You may have done some things wrong, bad. Get turned around today. I'm talking about Jesus here. Jesus has the power to set you free. When the sun sets free is free indeed, but the truth, when you know the truth, it makes you free, and that cannot be then unmade. So the Lord is uh, very serious about um, you know, people getting connected with him. But he's so glorious, and people can be so miserable, and the devils are so s sick and demented and stupid, you know. So there's a lot of things that go on in the world, but I want to bring us right to Jesus. He is the crucified Savior, the Son of God, 
who brings us life and the only hope for mankind in the world is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost around the world to bring the world into the touch of heaven that things can change for the better. And that's the only way it can happen because you know what? If you want to repay evil for evil, now you've gotten caught up for evil. Some people that are so criminal, let me, let me talk about it, they deserve punishment. They deserve serious retribution. And they deserve, even if you were to torture them and break bones and all that, you, you know, some people deserve it. I mean, they deserve it. You know what I'm talking about? Now, don't be no re religious mamby-pamby little... Why, why, you know, baby, because you've never been through anything. You go around the third world and the, across the world like I have, you run into real evil and evil people, even people in the church, even <laughs> preachers. Some of the worst culprits call themselves bishops. Let me not go all into that. And some of you are my friends in certain countries. You, you know the stories. You know what I'm talking about. The things they do. It's just beyond imagination that someone could call the name of Jesus in their life and say they're representing him and they, they're just the servants of Satan. I'll just say it right. Because what they cause to happen that they think nobody knows, but we know and God knows, and they even know. The devil knows too, but the devil doesn't care. You know, the devil, you can get caught up in what you know is known or uh, discovered or what. And, and, and the devil doesn't even care. He just laughs. He just wanted to, he's like the master, you know, criminal. You know, I could use another word, like what they just did in Nairobi and other places where they hit and do things. I don't want to say the word here for a few reasons, but, uh, you know, to be clever. But to just say the point that you understand who I'm talking about. And they just go there and then you catch them, whatever, kill them. They don't care. They go on, they just, they live for that day. They don't care, they'll laugh about it. Whatever damage they did, they're happy because that's all they wanted to do. And then uh, they, they just uh, carry on. You say, well, you know, you did this. They just laugh, they don't care, they're on their mission. The devil is absolutely insane. He doesn't care if you find him out or not. He only cares if you cast him out or not. He only cares about the anointing that will destroy the yokes. <laughs> That he puts on, uh, that he puts on people. Then he's like, "Whoa, oh boy, look at this!" And he's still all deluded and crazy and what? It was a funny song by Carmen. You know the singer Carmen, C A R M A N is his name. You can look him up online, Carmen, C A R M A N. And he did this song with the uh, uh, video of of uh, the devil being exploded. In, what was that called? Revival in the land or something like that. Yeah, and it was really a cool little video with actors and, you know, things. And, because it kind of shows the story of how the devil just sitting there wanting to do his thing and mess everybody up and, and doesn't care. And then when the demons came back to him, sir, there's a problem. You guys see it. I think it's called Revival in the Land, if I'm right. But, but look up Carmen and just go through his song, some of his videos. And it's the one that's like a mo little movie that they made a, a scene, scenes of a, you know, a production with actors and characters, you know. And uh, I think it's called Revival in the Land. Yeah, Carmen, C-A-R-M-A-N. -R now, that will give you an analogy of how the devil is, you know. The demons go, sir, there's a problem. There's Holy Ghost-filled people. <laughs> oh, I'm getting touched there. And they're laughing. I mean, no, they're crying because it's Holy Ghost-filled people and they're wreaking havoc in our kingdom, sir. And he's like, where? Uh. <laughs> and he just wants to carry on with his foolishness. He doesn't care. He's not rational. You know, when people do such evil things, and I've had people, I've seen people do the worst evil things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. OMG, triple caps, triple exclamation point. And I say, hey. How could somebody do that? You know, you, but you cannot rationalize the irrational. So stop trying to figure it out. Just get the victory and move on. And let me tell you something. The only place your victory is, is in the presence of God. 
in the presence of God. Hello, all you that are coming on. I'm not able to interact right now. I'm just really in the flow here. Hello, hello. Official greetings. I love you. I'm praying for you. Share this message with everybody. Please do that. And of course, later on, I'll look through all the comments and see them and say hi to you and click like and I will interact after this is uh, done, said and done. But I just want to flow straight ahead instead of looking at all the you know names popping up on the screen. So do share this. I love you. Anybody that's coming on, if I don't say your name right now because I'm not seeing it on the screen, for the sake of time, I'm also outdoors and the sun is going down so it'll get darker and darker. It's just at that time. And I want to be able to read these uh, headings before the, the darkness is really here and I have to turn on the lights. I got the natural light so far. It's good. Uh, let me get a little bit more. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Let there be light. And there was light. Okay. Look at that. Now it's like a ray of sun across my face. Okay. Anyway, 20 facts about Jesus. Are you ready? Number one, we need to see him as he is. The only way you're going to find out who he is is in the word. Take the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read them up and down and learn about the ministry of Jesus. Learn about how he thought how he spoke, what was his kind of his demeanor and what he had on his mind. And he's the one that said, I only do it and see what I say, what I see the Father do. Amen. Got a screen here. I can't get to, okay. It's giving a shadow in my, I don't know how to turn it to blank. I'll figure that out later. Number two, you got you have to see him. Number one, number two, what happens when Jesus shows up? Everything changes. Miracles begin to happen. Number three, Jesus and his his methodology, his methods, how he does things. You gotta you gotta know that he has ways of doing things. You want to study and know them. Now, again, this is very crystallized. I'm just giving this to you in a little list, and then you can go into it later. And one way you can do this is you can get the book. It's entitled Jesus, just the name Jesus, by Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. You can order the book online on uh, revival.com. Revival.com. You can order the book. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and get it there and see about it. I believe it's on their website. If not, you can contact them and get it. Get a copy of it direct. It's brilliant. It's just about Jesus. All about Jesus. Now, next point, and this was just this gift copy was just put into my hand. I'll show you the cover. It's brilliant. Jesus, there it is. It was just put into my hands, so I just felt instead of, uh, got, you know, dealing with another topic, I'll change it now and do this. I just felt the importance and the relevance of it is so vast. His methods. Ne- next point, number four. What did Jesus really do? What did he really do? WWJD. What would he do? What, what will he do? You, you could find out that from his word. And read about him and understand him and then you can know. And then when you know him and his power, you'll be able to get through anything, okay? So, number, the next point. The blood of Jesus, the blood, is all powerful. And that's what we need to always be proclaiming and declaring that it's over us. You know what I mean? And, And this plead the blood is erroneous because you don't plead and beg for something that's already been given. What an insult to the master. To like, I got to plead, like plead the blood. You know, that's all religious kind of terminology. Don't do that. Just say, I claim it. I declare it's over me. It's over my house, the blood. There were some uh, people that said they couldn't get to this man of God in a very occultic kind of area. And I know those places in Africa. Because, why? Why? Because of the blood, the blood of Jesus. You accentuate it so much. You declare it so much. It's over you. I want to declare it's over me. It's in me. 
the blood in my body, some of the blood of Jesus run in my veins because of the covenant. I'm maybe not physically, but spiritually. And and the Lord is, uh, his blood is over my house. His blood is over everything. He's the blood of Jesus, you know. If you see a demon in any form, just start speaking the blood, singing about the blood, declaring about the blood, and that devil's going to run because that's the thing that kills him the most. He can't handle it. Can't handle it. Talk about run and flee as in terror when you resist him. Resist him with the blood. Watch, he'll run even faster than just from your confession. Next point, the nature of Jesus. Again, in the word, you got to find out. You just read it, you'll catch his spirit. Some things are caught, not just taught. I'm in a hurry because the sun is going, ay. Okay, uh, the compassion of Jesus. Oh, he's the master compassionate one. The joy of our salvation. Yes, we have joy. Then Jesus, our righteousness. Jesus is right is our righteousness. He's the great physician. He's our protector. He's our provider. Then he's the one who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus, the traditional, the tradition breaker. Yes, yeah, rituals and traditions and things like that. You don't need those. You need to be a kingdom person. Even your church has culture. And that culture is okay as long as it doesn't get in the way of your Christianity. I started writing a book some time ago and I never got to do it. Oh, it's such a try. I, I want to get back and do that. But I, I heard this word, culture versus Christianity. Culture, the traditions of men, the Bible says, can make the, try to make the word of none effect. So you never want to let, your culture can be okay if it's even a ritual, even if it's a, if, it's a, if it's a clean one. And if it's something that gives you discipline and sense of community and all of that with your people, fine. But you never want it to get in the way of your Christianity, then God considers it uh, an anti-force against what he wants to do. The baptizer in the Holy Spirit, he's a tradition breaker. Yes, next. The healing and miracle ministry of Jesus. Oh, my God. And if we're like him, we're going to be healers, yeah? We're going to have the healing power. Got to do the lights. Thank you, for thank you, Lord, for this. Oh, God. Next point. Called, we're called to do the works of Jesus. Do you know that? not a lot of foolishness that goes on again any preacher that's in any corruption your soul is in danger of hellfire i have to warn you as god's prophet repent i feel the presence of god here is here with me in my car and i want to tell you you can you can uh you you can get free if you'll repent and you need to do it get out of any kind of thing that's wrong and just Say, you know, the scripture says it's better that you fall on the rock and be broken. You know, like to humble yourself, become contrite, even give up something, change your ways, change something that's what seems to be convenient for you. And then you can, uh, you know, be better doing that because if the rock falls on you, you'll be crushed to powder. Some people don't believe that and they don't fear God. Do you know, as we go on and on more and more in our time with the Lord, in the years I've been walking with him, 30, 30 plus years now, the Lord is, uh, the Lord is 32 years, yeah, it's more than 30, 32 years I was born again, 32 years ago, born again, 1986, the Lord is, uh, you know, you feel more humble, you feel more, more dependent on him, you feel like you, you got to give him the praise more, you got to give him the credit. And we never can take honor for something God did. Please know that. Please know that. And we need him to be doing a lot more through us. Now, when you're really anointed, the supernatural is going to flow. The real supernatural that the Holy Spirit, you know, does. Okay? Not uh, other things. So, you know, another thing, that it doesn't matter how big someone's church becomes... How big their name is, how much they get aggrandizement from people or whatever. All of that doesn't matter. It only matters what God thinks about it all. And he's the one that's going to reward you. And you're going to stand before him. And you're going to account to him. Hmm? 
So let's, let's reverence him and let's humble ourselves and let's give him all the praise and all the credit for everything he's doing. And all this stuff about, you know, positions and fighting over people and things and titles and aggrandizements and all that. You really don't need it. You really need the anointing. And when I said this before the other day in a, in a broadcast I did last like two days ago. Uh, yeah, the one about the power to create, about new books, new revelations, new new messages, yeah. And, and I was saying like, when, when, you're, when you're anointed, your name is enough. Just the name, your name, who you are, who your parents named you. Your natural name, because the works of God are going out through you, and people will know. Whether they call you apostle, prophet or not, you know, that all of that is, what's more important is the anointing. And when you have the glory moving, I'm telling you, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no mixing about, about, you know, what's happening. You know, like the miraculous, you cannot unmistake it. You can't mistake it for anything else. You can't overlook it. You can't deny it. You can't, uh. You'll, you'll know the proof is in it. You know, I just gave, I just uh, was, was t talking to some people and the Lord said some inspired things. They got it, they catch it, they feel the anointing, they know what, and it just goes like that. And then when you speak it positively out, even in conversation, without making a big deal about it, and just speaking, just speaking beautiful things in conversation. Even in conversation, and the Lord will produce and create new things. So we're called to do the works of Jesus. Next, Jesus is our good shepherd. Wow. He's, a, he's our overseer and bishop. He's our pastor. What more can you get than from him? People serve man too much and work with man too much, and even in the church world. We need to all get our eyes on God and on Jesus and on the Holy Spirit and receive from Him. And when we have a leader, you, you better know to honor that leader and really reverence that leader. Yes, but all the glory that is supernatural that's coming all came from God. So He's the boss. We're His, his workers. And yes, we need, you need to be honorable. You need to show honor. But you know what? I think many people are not God-minded enough. They say they are. They quote a scripture. They say, oh, yeah. But they don't. I don't know how much they're really gazing into his beautiful countenance. I'm talking about Jesus. The sweet presence of Jesus. Living in the presence of Jesus. Oh, I feel you here, Lord. Pressing into Jesus. Oh, God. And that's the 20 points. Just from the, you know, the quick synoptic version. I don't know if synoptic's the right word. List of uh, categories. And there's more, there's more. You'll find more. You'll see him prophesied in the Old Testament, you know, to the New. You'll, uh, you'll... You'll catch a hold of uh, the revelation of who he is in many ways. Also in the book of Revelation, you know, we see that it's called the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the Antichrist. So there's more about Jesus and the power of God in there than there is about the devil. But people want to focus on the bad stuff so much that they don't really see the power of God. You know, maybe not at the end it says the, the, the tree of life that has its leaves and branches as healing for the nations. Wow. And uh, overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. There's the blood again. The word of our testimony. Revelation 12, 11. And there's so much more revelation. 1, 6. Revelation 1, 6 says, We're kings and priests unto the Most High. That beautiful breeze. I don't know if you can hear the rustling in the palm trees. I want to show you that above me if I can. I know I'm getting off set here. But just check this out. Got to see it. I love palm trees. 
Oh, I love palm trees. So, just wanted to share that with you. The Lord bless you. I'm praying for you. Thank you for being my partner in ministry, helping us to go around the world. God is helping us. You know, I'm I'm very fine, doing very well. But what happens is when people connect, they get blessed. It's about them receiving something new from the from the boss. And whatever you do in transaction and partnership is a transaction you do with heaven. And God begins to produce and give you the harvest here on the earth. And I'm telling you, there's just nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. It's just the greatest thing that could ever be. That God would himself would bless us. And uh, I'm amazed at how great he, and beautiful and wonderful he is. Thank you for being with me. I'm going to sign off and I'll come back at you. Just wanted to share that. Just share that quickly with you. Uh, many great things are happening. You know, there's, a, there's an anointing for financial breakthrough. Of course, for salvation, for healing. You need that. Receive it. And also for financial breakthrough. Many people suffering. It's the biggest prayer request we get of any. In the percentages of there's so many people asking about Issues with their finances, because in this world you need money, and mon it's a mean world, man. You, they, you don't have money. You got people. I don't know what that's like for a long time. I've been debt free for so long. And I'm so blessed. God has so blessed me. But you know, even if some crops up to remind you of when you didn't have, it's a terrible feeling. So the Lord, that's why the Lord promised us abundance. And all I've been teaching on this. I have a special grace on me for this. I don't. God has had me teaching and sharing some things I haven't heard anybody doing. Like in this guise or wise, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just like, you know, the Lord is, uh, the Lord is uh, especially graced me to teach on the area of creating wealth and creation of wealth and financial abundance. And he's really revealed it to me that that's his will and desire for us. So in addition to the Gospels and the attributes of Jesus, I'm telling you, God wants you to walk in His power. He wants you to walk in His anointing, and He wants you to walk in His wealth. So I'm praying for you for financial abundance. And what happens is when you get blessed, and that's why poverty and religion go together, and the religious spirits and the poverty thing, and they, they just... They just it's the devil at work. He doesn't want to see you prosper. Because when you prosper, you have a lot of options to do anything you want to do. And you can advance the gospel of the kingdom all over the world. So, and also, a, a little admonition here. Come out more of the church and get more into the kingdom. I say that without apology. I don't care. It, do, it doesn't really fit PC, politically correct, you know, and... In some ways, because, you know, it's like, well, the church, the church, are you... No, I'm for the church. The local church is it, but it has to be right and it has to be anointed. And when you're privileged to know anointed men of God and women of God and connect and be, you know, connected with them, and it's, so, it's the most wonderful thing. But being stuck in church and not... Because, because the anointed vessel always leads you upward toward the boss toward i love to call him the boss i just want it's an affectionate thing for me don't mind me saying that you you may not have that revelation and i'm not just saying that i work for him i'm his son i'm his servant yes i'm his son i'm his friend and i'm getting more and more you know inundated and <sighs> inebriated and soused you know dipped swimming in the river of his glory and that's just that's just where that's just the best thing in life that can help you in every in every area someone said it's it's nothing not, no problem you have that a little more of the glory of god one of my pastors my pastor said that yeah 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 i just heard him say that i love that quote there's nothing that problem that you have in your life <laughs> that a little more of the glory of god can't fix and also the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich. That will help you. Because now you've cut out the middle man and people to harass you and stress you out and you, you're dealing with lack and you're always fighting that battle. Come out of that in Jesus' name. Get free and cross over into the abundance. You say, that's easy to say, but how do I do it? 
I'm tell, I'll tell you how to do it. Get more into the presence of God. He'll begin to illuminate your imagination with business ideas. He'll begin to connect you and give you favor. And partners of this work and this ministry, I'm telling you, they get blessed. Expect favor. Expect favor. Expect blessing. Expect provisions. You know, God has me to speak that over people. I'm speaking it over every one of my friends right now. But oh, the wicked, I'm not speaking that over you. Your wealth is even laid up for the just. And God will strip you of it. And the only thing you need to do is repent and get right with him if that's possible. It's possible, but if you are willing to yield to that, most people aren't, and that, are, that are crooked. But if you can do it, you can come out of it and become something something good and have God's blessing. But if not, there's no blessing for you. In fact, it's just curse, destruction, sadness, depression, sickness, devastation. What you stole will be taken from you and everything else too, you know, because you cannot touch the anointing. And you cannot do bad things to good people and get away with it. Cannot. God has a system. You think, well, they got away with it. No court got them or law. No, but God, God saw it. And he has a system, too. And he also has a system for blessing his own righteous people and his own elect. So I pray that you settle that, first of all. That's the first premise. But once you crossed over into the right side and you're on the righteous side of the, of the equation uh, in life with him, now you're going to get blessed. And I'm declaring blessings over you. A provision. <sighs> I feel the anointing. Release right now the fire. Oh, there it is right there. Take it. A fire of heaven upon you. A fire of heaven upon you. That you can, you can uh, just live in the glory of God. <sighs> I feel this. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. This lighted thing is it's crazy here. Uh, but the sun does rise and the sun does set, same time. Same way that law works, God's laws also work. So you want to get into his biblical economic system. You want to get into his flow of how he blesses his own. Learn about it, study it, but ask the Holy Spirit to give you a passion and a revealing of his own will and a revelation of this that he wants to bless your life. With salvation, yes. With healing, yes. With deliverance, yes. With peace and joy, yes. And also with abundance to live. That's the word of the Lord. I love you. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you. Thank you for being my partner and friend. Uh, right now, I have something happening. If you if you don't if you're donating now, a love gift, a substantial love gift. I pray that God will touch your heart and you. He can tell you what to do. I, I said the other day some numbers of things, but I almost wonder, if it, was I limiting things on that? But I have a two CD set. I don't have it in my hand right here, but I have it uh, in the studio. But I have the, uh, on the power to create wealth. If you have uh, been my partner and you're sowing right now a good seed, as the Lord would t tell you to do, I will send this to you as my gift. The Power to Create Wealth is on two CDs, and the entire message is on one DVD. If you'd like DVD and CD, or, or uh, either or, tell me which one you want, okay? And uh, we'll get that to you. I think there's something about it on our website, so go to, you can go to thomasmanton.com and see more about that. And uh, thank you for being my partner. My friends can put my numbers on the screen. You can impasa me in, uh, in, in, in Kenya. You can uh, use Cash App. You can use uh, the website, PayPal. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm praying for you. Praying for you. That the Lord would just do mighty things in your life. And that you would know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, greater than ever before. Isn't this wonderful? Can you feel this? Can you feel this here? Can you feel me? Can you feel that? Not him, him through me, I mean. Can you feel the presence of God? Whew. Glory. Glory. I got to go, but I just want to take a second and just soak in this and let this relief be released. Over the airways, let the impartation. Lift your hands right now where you are. 
if you're not driving or in a place where you're operating something, close your eyes. If not, just keep your eyes open. Pull over on the side of the road and just take a moment. and Just lift your hands. Replay this and share this. You can replay this too. Play this again and listen to this again. This is some deep truth here. And uh, about how heaven thinks about what you should be living in and walking in. And I just thank you, Lord, for the sweet, sweet presence of the Lord. Come upon my friend right now. You need healing, deliverance, receive it, take it. It's there for you. Oh, boy. I give you praise, Lord, for this word and for this truth and this move of your spirit. In Jesus' name, Thomas Manton IV. ThomasManton.com is the website. I love you, and I'll see you on the next broadcast. Seize the moment. Seize the day. Take it by force, but work on getting the revelation and then the learnedness about how God wants to touch and bless your life. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen.